The brilliant Sofia Kovalevskaya was born on January 15, 1850 in Moscow, Russia, and died on February 10, 1891 in Stockholm, Sweden. Her father was named Lieutenant General Vasily Vasilievich Korvin Kukovsky and was an artillery officer in the Russian army and was also part of the Russian nobility. Her mother was named Yelizaveta Fedorovna Schubert and was a typical housewife, but both her father and grandfather were mathematicians. This had a large influence on Sophia's life, as her nursery walls were covered with calculus sheets. This early exposure to mathematics eventually influenced Sophia to delve deeper into the field of differential equations and applied mechanics. After completing secondary school in St. Petersburg, Sophia wanted to travel abroad to get university-level education. However, as a female, she was not allowed to travel unless she was married. Now, let's delve deeper into Sofia's love life. Sofia married a man named Vladimir Kovalevsky in order to travel. He was a paleontologist and translated several of Darwin's work into Russian. Unfortunately, he committed suicide in 1883, leaving Sofia alone with her only child, a daughter. Seven years later, while teaching at the University of Stockholm, Sofia met a man named Maxim Kovalevsky, who was Vladimir's cousin. Maxim was a Russian jurist, and the two of them fell in love. However, if they wanted to marry, Sophia had to completely give up her work. Knowing she could not do that, she decided to leave Maxim. Anyway, after marrying Vladimir, Sophia was granted the permission to travel. She decided to go to Germany to study at the University of Berlin with a man named Weierstrass. After studying with him for four years, Sophia wrote three exceptional papers. In 1874, at a mere 24 years old, Sofia came up with the kouchy kovalevskaya theorem. The University of Göttingen found Sofia's work to be so extraordinary that they awarded her a PhD without having taken any classes at the university. After earning her degree, Sofia wanted to find a job. However, as a woman in Germany, she faced unemployment. Thus, Sofia decided to spend the rest of her life in Sweden and France. These were the years Sophia were active in her work. During this active period, Alexander II had been assassinated in Russia, and the women's rights movement was in full force, and Sophia herself was an advocate for women's rights. During these active years, Sophia accomplished many great things. In 1888, when Sophia was aged 33 years old, she researched the rotation of a solid body about a fixed point. This can be thought of as a top, and her research examined how Saturn's rings rotated. In fact, her study and research on the topic won her two prizes, the first of which was a Prix Bourdon, which is awarded by the French Academy of Science, and the second of these two awards is a prize from the Swedish Academy of Science. In 1890, at 40 years of age, Sophia published her final work, which was giving a simpler proof for Brun's theorem, which basically states that the reciprocals of twin primes converge. Now, you might be wondering, how did Sophia make her discoveries? Well, she had her dear friend and teacher, Professor Weierstrass, to help discuss ideas with her. She also built upon previous theorems and ideas that mathematicians had already come up with. Now it's time for a fabulous, fascinating, fun fact. From 1883 to 1885, Sophia gained a tenured position at the University of Stockholm and was appointed an editor for a mathematics journal, as well as the chair of mechanics. All at the same time, she co-wrote a play called The Struggle for Happiness. In fact, she is quoted saying, it is impossible to be a mathematician without being a poet in soul. Now that is impressive. In 1891, when Sophia was walking home in the rain, she got pneumonia and sadly passed away. Although her death was sudden, her discovery still affected the world in many ways. In fact, many of Sophia's papers were groundbreaking theories or laid the path for future discoveries. Sophia showed the world that women can also make valuable contributions in science and math. To celebrate Sophia's work and her life, Lunar Crater on the Moon was named after her, as well as an asteroid. Thank you for watching.